Okay, welcome to the critical thinking section. Now, honestly, the critical thinking section is probably one of the most beautiful sections in the IMAT. And the reason I say that is because studying critical thinking is just so high yield. And you'll see what I mean in just a minute. But first of all, let's explain how the critical thinking section works. So technically speaking, critical thinking isn't even its own section. It's just a subsection of the logical reasoning section. And ever since 2019, the logical reasoning section has had 10 questions. Now, they don't specifically say how many will be allocated to critical thinking, but in all the exams since 2019, there have been five questions allocated to critical thinking. That means that this section is worth 7.5 marks. And as I said, this section is so high yield. And the reason for that is it only takes pretty much one day of studying and you will learn everything you need for the section. You of course need to practice and get good at it, but in terms of studying, you can learn everything you need to know very quickly. Now, the way critical thinking works is there are seven question types. These are the only types of questions they can ask you in the IMAT, and they are the following. Summarizing the main conclusion, drawing a conclusion, identifying an assumption, assessing the impact of additional evidence, detecting reasoning errors, identifying parallel reasoning, and finally, applying principles. Now, for each of these question types, there is a special technique involved. And if you memorize that technique and you get some practice using it, you're pretty much guaranteed to get the mark in the IMAT. So think of it like this. If you put in the effort for this section, you're pretty much guaranteed seven and a half marks come IMAT time. And that is a massive advantage. A lot of people don't realize this, and hence they miss out on these easy marks. Don't be that person. This could be the section that gets you into medical school. Now, something very important to mention. A lot of people, in fact, most people who take the IMAT probably won't have English as their first language. And some students get intimidated by the fact that it's a written passage. They think that these questions are somehow assessing them on their level of English knowledge. That is not the case. Now, obviously, you need to know how to read in English, but that's something I'm assuming you all know, since otherwise you probably wouldn't be planning on studying medicine in English. But as far as the questions themselves go, they are not assessing you on your level of English knowledge. There is a specific strategy for each one, and it's that strategy you need to know. You don't need to start learning fancy English terminology or anything like that. It's the strategy that counts. Now, I'll do a video on each one of these question types and explain the strategy for solving them. Today, we're just going to focus on actually understanding how this section works. All right, so what does a critical thinking question even look like? Well, here we have an example question from the IMAT test specification 2020. So I'm not going to bother reading it out. We'll do that in another lesson. But this is what the question will look like. And really, for all critical thinking style questions, you should do the following. First of all, you have to read the question. And by question, I don't mean the passage at the top here. I mean this little sentence underneath. That is, which one of the following best expresses the main conclusion of the above argument? And the reason you read that first is because when you read that, you will be able to identify which type of critical thinking question this is. That is, which one of those seven types you're dealing with. And when you read that, you will then underline this little trigger word here, which in this case is main conclusion, and you will know that you are dealing with a conclusion type question. So really, I can't stress this enough. Never read the passage first. Always read the question first, because otherwise you are just wasting your time, and time is of the essence in the IMAT. Okay, so once you've read the question, you then know what you're looking for, and you can read the passage. And then, depending on what question type you're dealing with, you will employ the specific strategy for that question type. So this is a summarizing the main conclusion type question. That is the first question type. So you will then employ the specific strategy for that question type and you will find the conclusion, which is this part here. And as I mentioned, I won't explain actually how you find this now. We'll do that in the next lesson. But assuming you knew how to do it, you would underline the conclusion and then you would pretty much just search the answers, find the one that matches and select it, which in this case was D. And really, that's pretty much all there is to it. And these questions, they take about maybe a minute to solve, maybe a bit less. It depends on how long the passage is. But really, they are so preparable for. There is really nothing new that the IMAT writers can actually do to make these questions difficult. So if you know what to do, if you know the strategy, and if you have had enough practice, you will get the question right. And you can pretty much count on the fact that you will get seven and a half marks from this section. 
Okay, so as I mentioned, I will cover the strategy for each one of the question types. So once you've watched those, you will hopefully know how to solve each of the questions. Then you just need to get some practice. Now, where can you get some good practice questions? Well, you will find practice questions on IMAT Buddy, so I definitely recommend looking at those. Once you've finished all those, you should also do some of the IMAT pass papers because they will obviously have some of these questions. But don't do the questions individually. No, make sure you sit the IMAT papers in one sitting and under time conditions because IMAT papers are the best way to prepare for the IMAT and you don't want to waste them by just doing the questions individually. Now, once you've finished all the questions from IMAT Buddy and the past IMAT papers, you can actually find more of these questions in past BMAT papers because the people who write the IMAT are actually the same people who write the BMAT. And it just so happens that the BMAT also has this critical thinking section and they will be of the same question types. So I don't recommend sitting the BMAT papers under time condition. I mean, maybe you can time yourself for the individual questions, but your objective here is to get good at the IMAT, not the BMAT. So my advice is just do all the questions you can in the BMAT papers as individual questions. And really, if you do all this, there will be nothing the IMAT writers can do to throw you off. And you will get every one of those questions correct when you actually sit the IMAT.